It's the Idol Threat Wrestling Podcast, the interview section here today with uh, international superstar. This guy's been around for 15 plus years. Uh, Phil Atlas, welcome to the show, Phil. 16 years. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so we'll start out. You were the biggest fan favorite in probably the history of Border City Wrestling, and then suddenly the big heel turn. What was with that? Well, I was kind of getting bored with what I was doing. Um, I really wanted to uh, just, I always took advantage of anything I could do that was different. Um, so I started thinking about it, but I just knew that it probably wasn't going to happen just because how big I was as a baby face in, in Windsor. And then uh, actually Scott came up to me, Scott Damore, and he actually asked me, he's like, what do you think about going heel? And I said, uh, I've actually thought about it a lot. He's like, what, what, do you want to do it? And I just thought about it. I'm like, can I have a little bit? Can you think about it? I literally walked around the, the St. Clair College, it was one, whatever show that was, right? Uh, the, the one before the 25th. Uh, yeah. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure. No, it was the Impact one where I, uh, well, me and Brent was OVE. Oh, okay. It was when I turned on. So that day, I just I was thinking about it, walking around after that conversation with Scott, and I thought, the hell with it, let's do it. You know? And I just been running with it ever since. And that's, it started there for me uh, doing my heel work, but uh, I started slowly just organically going, bringing that character and that, the, the heel persona everywhere I was working. And now pretty much I'm, I'm heel everywhere. Never. And I think that gives more belie- believability yeah, yeah. as I'm not uh, switching things up just, you know, a town over. Yeah, and uh, heel, I personally, I'm a fan of the heel better than uh, the baby face. I really... Like, I know how to get under people's skin. It's good. You, do a good, you really do a good job. I like the audience really like you were maybe the most over wrestler in the history. You got a cage match with Tyson? Exactly. It's one of the things I remember most about Wrestling. It was the 20th anniversary. Um, yes. That's literally that's the moment I remember that night when you uh, suplex off the top of the cage. Bleeding everywhere. Yeah. Fantastic. And then though suddenly you became a heel so the Border City fans really felt, you know, betrayed by what you had done. Like they emotional the Border City yeah. fans are really passionate about their favorite guy. And for you to switch, you know if you see that footage you just hear the, really sh- the shock of the crowd. Yeah. And it actually I heard there's a couple kids crying in the front row. I definitely believe there was. Parts of <laughs> the- <laughs> Um, so last month they had the impact tapings at St. Clair. They where, did, yeah. And, uh, you know, for the first time in how long Phil Atlas wasn't like headlining uh, at Border City show, or it was impact, but it was, you know, the Border City guys were there, and you weren't even on the show. And I, one time I thought I remembered seeing you on the flyer, and then you were gone, and you were on AIM 800 promoting, and like just suddenly like day of the show I was there I was on the ring crew and like, you weren't around didn't see you around and then finally like uh, whatever time on social media you have a big long post address like the situation if you want to kind of go through the what happened with that for us um I don't think we can go into, into any uh detail of any sort but um there were just miscommunication and uh things said and things done and it wasn't just like something that happened just out of nowhere, right? This was probably a year, year and a half of just this kind of boiling, boiling over and uh, just collecting in, in my thoughts and everything. And uh, yeah, the falling out with uh, the boss there, Scott Demore. Um, I'm not gonna say anything other than that, but it's a shame, it's you know? It's fair. I mean, he's known, I've known him since I was probably 14 years old when I met him, you know? So. Uh, yeah, it sucks. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm never going to be back in Border City Wrestling or attempt anything with Impact again, obviously, because that's not something I want to say or even something I feel. But uh, as of right now, it's not going to happen. All right. Um, fair enough. So you uh, obviously wrestle all over. Uh, you wrestle in Japan. You wrestled all over Ontario. Though you've got some shows coming up there. We could maybe talk about if you want to like, promote those with uh, you got tomorrow. Big one, we were defending the Crossfire title against Cody Diener in yes, sir. the Crossfire promotion out of the Niagara region, I believe they're from. Yes, yes. So, been around for about eight years, I want to say. And uh, you can catch them on uh, the Fight app. On Fight app, app, yep. Yeah. And YouTube, just search uh, Crossfire Wrestling or even just search Phil Atlas and you'll see a lot of those matches yeah. up there. Um, yeah, I got Cody Diener uh, for like the fifth or sixth time for this promotion. 
Uh, this promotion really thinks that this is a blockbuster match, apparently, because they keep having me, having me face Diener. Um, I mean, there's a lot to say about this match. Um, if you just go back and watch some of Crossfire stuff, you'll see that uh, this has all been like a, uh, a story that we've been kind of going through for the last like two, three years. And uh, between me and Chris Plant, the owner, and Cody Diener himself, you know, as well as uh, an MMA fighter from the Niagara, like he's a big, big name in the Niagara region, a local hero that I kind of tussled with as well. And um, yeah, there's a lot of personal animosities uh, in this match. And uh, yeah, if you get a chance, just to, we're going to be doing that tomorrow at 4 p.m. at the Meriton Community Center in St. Catharines. And uh, yeah, if you want to see it, just wait a couple weeks. You'll be able to check the fight app or YouTube and search it up and we'll see. Like, you, you watch, uh, me and Deer went out uh, December 1st, I believe, last year. And uh, that one's on YouTube. Jingle Bell Brawl, and uh, that's a good watch. You guys want to check that out? Yeah, definitely, definitely get checked out. Other, uh, other matches coming up. Your uh, PWA debut is the first time you're yes. going there. Yeah. Guelph. Yeah. Right, Guelph. Uh, Josh Alexander, you're supposed to be taking on for his Yes. Show. I literally just, uh, like, a couple, couple days ago, I put a big post about how this is the first time I kind of hyped it up. I really hyped it up, you know what I mean? I really just blew my load and tried to hype it up as much as I could. And, uh, Literally the next day I found out that he wasn't going to make it. I guess he got double booked or something, so. Nah, it wasn't meant to be, man. I don't know. We've been around for how long, and we've wrestled the same promotions pretty much, you know, and uh, we've just been never locked horns, so. No, nah, that's too bad. Yeah. He's obviously just made his impact. What I was excited about it. Yeah. I, I was excited about it, too. What? I watched, I mentioned uh, two episodes ago that we had... Uh, well, Reverso talked about his matches with uh, Josh Alexander. Yeah, he, see, he's supposed to be the king of reversing everything, like Al Reverso, the great Reverso. Uh, he didn't reverse much in that match with Josh Alexander, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> he's got to work on his reversals, man. <laughs> I really enjoyed his work in, uh, in PWA, though. Oh, yeah. There was uh, a couple of good matches that he had with Josh Alexander, about three of them. I watched them all. Um, but what's, uh, what's the next step for uh, Phil Atlas then? Are you... Oh, I wanted to say though, oh. what I was really excited about working with Josh, Josh Alexander for the first time is the fact that like when you look at me and him, in every aspect we are polar opposites. From wrestling styles to personalities inside and outside of the ring to, to, to looks, you know what I mean, to uh, our wrestling styles, to our moveset, to, to our mannerisms, everything is totally different. There's nothing alike with us. Maybe our work ethic or our drive, I guess, or passion. The most entertaining to watch for sure. That's what right. I mean. I thought it would be really uh, just the difference of styles. Though, yeah, just, yeah. I, like, I don't even know. I didn't have a, really a game plan even going into it. Like, I just, I just thought uh, the fact that we're so different. I just go yeah, off that's that. Yeah, uh, unfortunate. That match is gonna happen. Uh, maybe in the future, though. Yeah, why not? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, you both wrestle in this area quite a bit, so yeah. I'm sure you guys. Any promoters up there? Lock up at the main event for you. Boom. Yeah, I would, that just main event quality. I'd say. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, what's, what's next for you though? Like, uh, any other dates coming up you want to plug or? Um, let's see. Border Town Pro Wrestling is a is a promotion that I'm, I'm involved with right now. They're at Fort Erie. Uh, they're good. You can catch some videos on YouTube as well. Um, Super Kit in Toronto is also a big one I work for. Um, very entertaining shows. So they're at uh, the Great Hall, 1087 Queen Street West, Toronto, Ontario. And these shows are like, they're not like a typical wrestling show. There's no chairs. It's more like a concert atmosphere. I mean, the crap's right up against the ring, leaning on it, smashing on it, you know. Um, they're very much part of the, as part of the show as much as we are. I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole different atmosphere. I've, I, yeah, I've seen them online. They look oh, like yeah. a fun. They look like they'd be a fun environment. Yeah. You know? Lately, I've been doing... like, uh, Did you ever wrestle for the uh, the Juggalo Championship Wrestling? Yeah. It's kind of the same kind of crowd environment. Yeah, they yeah. They don't throw as much shit at you. Well, I did actually got to do the gathering two years ago. And uh, they dressed us up like rednecks. It was me, Jake Something, and Joe Coleman against uh, Violent J, Two Tough Tony, and the Rude Boy. And then uh, that's actually epic. That's a that's an all star. As far as Juggalo Championship wrestling goes, that's an all star match. I started right throwing there. like the crowd was whipping shit at us, right? Yeah. So I threw it back, and uh, Scott was out there, and they dressed him up like a redneck as well. So he came out with us actually, 
And I remember you look right at me and he goes, stop throwing shit. Don't throw shit back. And I'm like, okay, that probably makes sense. So I stopped. He's like, don't aggravate him or don't agitate him or whatever he said. But uh, yeah, it was actually really cool. When uh, Violent J made his big comeback, uh, there was a double down. And uh, Shaggy came out. He was doing commentary. And he came running out with a giant blunt like this big. And he lit it up and passed it to Jay, and Jay started hulking up while he's smoking the joint. And he did the whole Hulk Hogan comeback while smoking the dude. Amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. And the crowd, the crowd's chanting, Magic Blunt, Magic Blunt. I mean, what the hell was that? It was like at 3 in the morning. Yeah, those shows look like they're fun, but I've always heard like a lot of wrestlers, like they said, they're great, the guys are great to work for, the ICP, like great guys, but just the fans just are so in and throw shit, and they just don't want to... He was, he was real funny. Like Ric Flair said he enjoyed being at whatever one no, he yeah, did, but he said man. he wouldn't go back because he didn't like getting all the shit thrown around. Or oh yeah, I mean, if I was Ric Flair, I probably wouldn't do that either. Yeah. I'm not Ric Flair. Unfortunately. But, uh, but, but, uh, Violet J was actually pretty funny, though, like, he was like... He would sit where we're calling the match and stuff, and he'd be like, you know, you guys can hit me, man. Don't be afraid to hit me, but not, not that hard. Don't make me look like a bitch. You know, like, like you can lay it in there, but not, not too hard, though, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, yeah. yeah, and then he wanted to give me a brain bust, and I was really worried about that. But they're, they're, they can wrestle, though, right? Those guys can, they're, they're trained. They were trained before they were ra or rappers, yeah, I mean, right? they're, yeah, yeah, but they don't keep up on it, right? I mean, they, yeah, they get true. it, they yeah, understand. Yeah. And uh, that was his first time ever being in the ring, like, for oh, yeah, like, right. 10 years, too. So he was, like, super... Just seeing how hyped up he was, like, was it was just something to see. He was like pretty excited to get in there with us. So, yeah. Any, yeah. So, uh, anything else you want? To uh, I've lo recently been doing Lucha Tio, also located in Toronto, and they do shows at the Opera House. Uh, yeah. did you, uh, like, this is a Lucha base for uh, like uh, a lot of Lucha. For the most part, there's a lot of masked guys. Yeah. They, uh, they had Joey Ryan there. Okay. Um, last show. Here in Darlin. Um, King of Dong style. Yeah. I'm not, I, uh... Dong style. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. I'm not, uh, oh, no? He's got, like, a super dick I know what he, people's out. I, I know what he does. It's just not my thing, so I haven't really... I mean, I'm not going to tell you it's my thing either, but... <laughs> so, uh, yeah. There's definitely a market for it. I guess so. That's why I said Internet Darling. They love him there, but, uh... I've mentioned before on the show, I did. I, I, I like modern wrestling too, but I really like, I have kind of a Jim Cornette attitude in that when, when he says about Joey Ryan, I'm kind of like, yeah, I, you know, but that's but you can't neither here nor there. It's entertaining if the fans like it. That guy's booked everywhere. Exactly. WWE was yeah. talking to him yesterday or whatever. I don't know. That's what the internet said. But he's, he's booked here. everywhere. So like, how are you going to knock what he's doing? It's not like, it's not like what he's doing is killing the business. I mean, the business has already been killed multiple, multiple times. Right. It's not, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. Oh. Uh, what else? I got uh, Classic Championship Wrestling, CCW. That's making a comeback, and I'll be uh, returning in uh, May 18th, I believe the show is. That's right around, uh, where is that one? Chatham. Chatham. Yeah, well, they, they do everything. They, okay. they go everywhere all over. Right. Usually they'll do like tours in the summer, but uh, the first one, they had a little hi hiatus, but uh, the first one that we're going back with is May 18th, I believe. Just... Search up Classic Championship Wrestling, and uh, yeah, we're returning at the Wish Chatham Wish Center. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, man, just keep checking back on my social media accounts. Yeah, so and plug any of uh, whatever you want, where we uh, find you. And, Instagram. Uh, Instagram. You got Atlas Bushido underscore eighty eight, and Bushido is B U S H I D O. All right, that that's right. You also got uh, Twitter, that which I don't really use much. Yeah, not Twitter guy. Yeah. It's uh, at Phil Atlas, P, capital P, capital A. And then you got uh, my Facebook. You can just search my fan page, Phil Atlas. And uh, email for bookings, you can contact me on that as well. Or you can just email me at f underscore atlas08 at hotmail.com. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming to the show. And uh, thanks for having me, man. Hopefully, we'll have you back again and we can go sure, more. And uh, this has been another interview segment of the Item Podcast.